Hi, I'm Bob Crager. I'm the author of the book Historic Barns of Ohio, and I hope you enjoy these amazing barn stories. Yes, this is in Erie County. I call this essay Prisoners of War, and the barn actually came down about a year before I visited. Well, this fellow who took it down, who owned it, was on the Historical Society, and since he knew it was coming, he saved some wood so I could frame it uh, and co capture a little bit of nostalgia in the painting in the frame. And it, it traces back uh, not as long as some of the other ones, but it had a slate roof with the date on it, 1901, as many barns in northern Ohio did. And uh, it had a good good story to it uh, that uh, was really uh, new to me and might, might be new to you too. Well, the Pickett's bought this farm in the 1930s, uh, 1920s maybe, and planted thousands of cherry trees. So by the 1930s, they were ready to harvest. So migrant workers would come by and they would uh, stay in the barn overnight, sleep in the stalls of the horses, and the lady would, would feed them the meals and they would pick the cherries. And then eventually, the locals would augment their income. In fact, I interviewed one 87-year-old, Bill Otto, who actually did that in the 1940s. And he told me that uh, he and his four, four siblings uh, were trying to make more money than their dad was making, but they never did. But, th but they had a quota and they got paid so much per bucket. And he said the boys uh, back in the 1940s would always want to go inside the barn because that's where the pretty girls were that were packaging up the cherries. So I don't know if he ever got a chance to do that. I'm sure he did. But the interesting part of the story is that in Camp Perry, which is a little further north, there were prisoners of war. Yes, Germans and Italians from World War II, believe it or not. And the guards transported them down all the way to pick cherries. Well, the Germans weren't very fond of being captured. And when they picked their 20, 20 buckets, that was their quota for the day, they went back to the bus. But the Italians, on the other hand, had plenty to talk about because they wanted to talk to their relatives and find out what was new in Italy and so forth and so on. Anyway, the, the problem was, in 1942, Britain had 273,000 prisoners of war and they couldn't take care of them. So Churchill convinced Roosevelt to take some off their hands. So the first batch was 150,000. So we had prisoners of war in every state, including Alaska, which wasn't a state then, of course. And we, we took good care of those prisoners of war. Now that irritated some people because they knew from talking to their um, soldiers overseas that uh, our POWs didn't get quite the same service that we gave the Germans and Italians over here. So that was a source of irritation. Anyway, the barn had to come down, uh, cherry trees uh, finished giving up cherries, and that large structure you see behind the barn seems to have been an interesting relay station which relayed radio signals from Cleveland up to Toledo and then up to Detroit. It was a strange, uh, a strange thing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still standing now or not, but uh, the, the, the story of the prisoners of war was revolutionary to me. I did not know about that. And uh, it shows that uh, our patriotic war effort uh, was also kind and that we took good care of their, of their folks. Uh, unfortunately, ours didn't get the same. 